Hey, what's up guys? It's John here, Sub-Zero Gaming. Um, I'm here today to do a really short, quick tutorial. And uh, I got a message from someone regarding pausing and unpausing your game. And actually, this is a pretty good topic because it's going to go over uh, something called time.time scale. And in the past, we've gone over time.delta time, which is ideally real time. Um, it allows us to be able to go with it. Um, so what we're going to do today is I'm not going to show you guys any code. Uh, this is going to be really interactive. You're going to do it yourself. You're going to create your own pause function. And we're going to basically, when we hit the P key, it's going to pause our game. When you hit it again, it's going to unpause our game. I'm also going to talk about other things you can do with the time.timescale function. But first, what I need you to do is go to the reference manual and type in time.timescale. All right, and that's capital T for time, dot lowercase t for time, and then capital S for scale. All right. So time that time scale, and that's the method we're going to be using. So if you go to the uh, if you go to the reference manual, it should say something that the scale at which the time is passing, um, it can be used for slow motion effects, and that's actually 100% true. It can be used for slow motion effects, but it can also be used to stop the game entirely. Um, when time that time scale is one, it's real time. So right now the max it can be is one. It's a float anywhere between zero and one. So it could be a decimal. It could be 0 0.005. It could be 0 0.1. Um, it could be, uh, you know, it could be any float you can think of between zero and one. And when time dot is set to zero, the game is basically paused if all your functions are frame rate independent. Now, what does that mean if they're frame rate independent? That means that, for instance, all your physics updates, all right, anything that requires physics that goes by frame by frame, those won't be called when the time scale is zero because basically what you're doing is you're basically going like this in your game. You're moving, you're moving, you're moving, and then you're telling the system to just stop. Okay. Now. Besides the pause effect, you can also use it, as it says in the reference manual, for slow motion effects. So 1.0 for the time scale is real time. So it's like real moving, you know, real walking, talking. And then if you put it, say, at 0 0.05, or I'm sorry, not 0 0.05, 0 0.05, um, and now that's half real time speed, it's actually twice as slow as real time speed. So if you're walking, it's going to be half motion. Um, you can even put it to 0 0.02 to have extra slow-mo. Um, if you guys are familiar with the game Richard, they actually use time that time scale to slow down their game when they're in gravity mode. Um, so that's enough talking about what we're going to do. Let's go ahead and just do it. So what you need to do first is, in whatever you're doing, say it's in your most likely you're going to be a player class, and if you're working on like a platform, or you can even add this to the space shooter if you want, um, or any game, you're going to want to make a new function and have this pause method in it. All right, so go ahead and just create a function. And if you don't remember what a function is, guys, it's the uh, it's basically allows us to clean up our code in the update function, so it's not cluttered in there. So a function allows us to call a bunch of methods instead of retyping them every time and going through it every frame in the update method. So go ahead and create a new function. Um, we're going to use type void because it's not going to return anything. All right, so you're going to make a new function. Um, let's see, we say a function and name it pause. So function. Um, pause. All right. So you have your function pause. Now inside that function, right? And you can do this in the update method as well. The only problem with doing that in the update method is it's going to look like shit. It's going to be a bunch of plus, uh, a bunch of you know clustered code, and it's just not pretty. So we're going to put it in a function, and then in the update method, we want to check uh, if we're hitting the correct key, and if we are, it's going to call this function pause. All right, so below your update method, you should be making a function for pause. So for, to give you help, um, it's void pause, okay? Um, once you create that function, guys, you want to basically, on the reference manual, what's it say? It says if the time is at 1.0, we're in real time speed. So we're going like that. But if it's 0 0.05, we're going half speed. And if we're at zero, then we're paused. So what we want to do is we want to make an if statement, okay? If statement. And what are we doing in that if statement? What are we checking to see if it's true or false? In that if statement, guys, you want to put the time scale, the current time scale. So if statement time.timescale is equal to 1, then what do you want to do to pause it, guys? So if if statement with time.time.scale is equal to 1, um, so that's saying if time.timescale is equal to 1, then in that if statement, what do you want to do? You want to set it to 0, right, to pause it. So go ahead and do that. So you're going to set it to 0. Set um, time scale equal to zero. Okay, you're going to set your time scale equal to zero. And then 
How else? So right now, what it says, guys, is if the state if statement inside your statement is going to say something like time dot time scale is equal to one, then set time scale is equal to zero. So now that's our pause function. Now what we want to do though is what if we hit the P key again? We want to unpause it, right? So you could obviously write a new state, a new function, unpause. But why do that? Why why make extra work for yourself? Figure out how you can turn this if statement around to where if Time dot time scale is equal to one. Set time scale equal to zero, and maybe an else statement to where time time dot time scale is equal to one, and test that out. See if that works. So once you have this function, right, you have your pause function. What you want to do now is actually create a check. So in the update method, you're going to check. You're going to check to see if we hit the P key. So just like in the space shooter, guys, um, we're checking to see if we're hitting the space bar to fire or you know anything like that. And when we do hit the spacebar, a function of code will happen. So what you want to do is you want to say, you know, if P key is pressed in the update function, and then the method it's looking for, go ahead and put your pause function in there. So it should be if input.get key, I guess, get key code and P, and then inside it, just put your function. All right? This was a quick tutorial on how to do this. Um, if you have any problems, guys, post your code, uh, comment, subscribe. If you need any help, just message me, comment, and I'll be glad to assist you. Alright guys, take care.